Welcome back. Tom Harbin here with you, and uh, I'm super pleased, honored to have in the studio with me Richard A. Clark. He is the CEO of Good Harbor Security Risk Management. He served three consecutive presidents in the capacities of Special Assistant to the President of Global Affairs, Special Assistant to the President of Cyberspace and National, and National Coordinator uh, of Security and Counterterrorism. Uh, and he's the author of uh, other books prior to this as well, but uh, his most recent, Warnings, Finding Cassandra's to stop catastrophes. Uh, it's from Warnings. Uh, the website is warningsbook.net if you'd like to check it out. Um, and, and you probably remember Richard Clark. He's been a guest on this program probably at least a half a dozen, maybe more times over the years, uh, probably closer to a dozen. Mm -hmm. um, uh, going back to your concerns right after, right before 9 11, that 9 11 was going to happen and, and your attempts to warn the Bush administration um, that were ignored. And, and this book, uh, well, first of all, Richard Clark, welcome to the program. Oh, it's great to be with you in, you. in person, finally. <laughs> yeah, thank you, for, thank you so much for joining us. So um, the, if, if we could just kind of set the frame, because this book is about let's pay attention to people, essentially like Richard Clark. Uh, let's pay attention to the people who were saying, hey, look out, something's going to happen. And, and so you want to start with your story, mm -hmm. how, how you became a Cassandra? Well, this book, this book is not about me. You know, I wrote uh, Against All Enemies about my, my experience. That was my first book. This is number eight. Um, but I did have a period in the Bush administration when I was warning them, and I thought the evidence was compelling, and they weren't paying attention. And I, I didn't get that. I couldn't understand why not. Uh, and so after some years went by and I had the opportunity, I asked a few people, have you ever noticed this is a phenomenon? Um, after every big disaster, there's an investigation. I had the 9-11 Commission then interrogate me. Um, and I think their, their report exonerated me and made it pretty clear that what I was saying was right. But there's always an investigation, and the investigation usually shows, hey, there was that person who was warning in advance, who was an expert, who had data, and they were ignored. So I've asked my friends, you ever notice that? And they say, yeah, well, it happened in Katrina, it happened in Fukushima, it happened in Bernie Madoff. And I thought, wait a minute, is there, is there a thing here? Is this a phenomenon? And does it span different fields? It's not just intelligence and, and security issues. It happens in finance, it happens in science, it happens in engineering, it happened with the Challenger space shuttle. That's right. There was a guy warning about the O-rings. Right? right up to the morning, right up yeah. to that morning and, and for weeks prior. Uh, so why is it when experts have evidence and they present it that a disaster is about to happen, why is it they're ignored? That's what the book is about. And the question in the book is, if we can find these experts after the fact, can we find them before the fact? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a... And, and I want to explore that, that question with you, but it's also not a new question. I mean, we talk about Cassandra. Cassandra, as I recall, was an ancient Greek story. Isn't that about a 3,000-year-old story? It's a 3,000-year-old story about a woman who was cursed by the gods in Troy. And the curse was she could see the future, which doesn't sound like a curse. Like, who wouldn't want to see the future? But the curse part of it was no one would believe her when she warned them about what was going to happen in the future. So she went crazy. Uh, because no one would pay any attention to her. I thought, yeah, I get that. You know, I, you, could, you could easily go crazy. <laughs> yes. uh, and, yeah, throughout history there have been Cassandras. Winston right. Churchill, when we talk in the book, Winston Churchill was, by his contemporaries, called a Cassandra before World War II. Well, he was not unique in that or alone in that. No, experience. no, no. Um, and, and the people calling the Cassandras, I mean, here in the United States, you had, you had uh, Charles Lindbergh, you know, uh, running around going, oh, there's nothing to worry about, everything's fine. In fact, there's that amazing book. My dad gave it to me um, for my birthday years ago um, by Rex Stout, the, who at the time was the most widely published author in the United States. He did the uh, Nero Wolf series. Mm -hmm. He had 73 million books in print. Oh. This was published in, in uh, just after World War II. He was the head of the propaganda board for Roosevelt for, you know, to keep America pumped up, right, mm -hmm. to, for the war effort. And it's called The Illustrious Dunderheads, and it's a collection of speeches on the floor of the House and Senate, all of them saying, there's nothing to worry about. We can get along with Mr. Hitler. Yeah. This is crazy. In, in Why the, are you guys all getting all upset? In the face of overwhelming evidence. Yes. Yeah. And so we ask 
in the book, why do people reject evidence? Well, one reason is the event they're talking about is outlandish. It's, it's, it's something that's huge and would have an enormous magnitude uh, effect, and no one wants to deal with that. They, they think that perhaps by denying its truth, it won't happen. Mm. This is all subliminal. It's all subconscious. The other thing is the event has never happened before. Uh, if it's never happened before, no matter how evident it is it's about to happen, again, subconsciously, people think, uh, I don't have to worry about this because that's never happened. Right. Well, history, as you can see, history is a list of things that never happened before. They're happening for the first time. Every day we're happening, they're having things happen for the first time. Uh, and yet people reject predictions based on this. What we're really talking about here are outlier experts. Mm -hmm. People who see things before the other experts. Um, Jim Hansen on climate change uh, is in the book in, in two regards. One, he saw climate change in the 1980s and was suppressed by the two Bush administrations. But now Hansen is again an outlier because he's predicting sea level rise will be faster and higher than the, the accepted wisdom. Right. Uh, he's, and, the, and the IPCC has been proven wrong by being too conservative, too careful, over too cautious. And over and over again. With, with, with every single report, I mean, without exception. Right, and, and so last week we had the, uh, the, this EPA director... Uh, under Trump, quoting James Hansen as saying, well, I don't like the Paris Agreement. He was misquoting him. Of course he was. They misquote people all the time. He was misquoting him because what Hansen said was, I don't like the Paris Agreement because it's not tough enough. Right. It will not stop the sea level rise. And if Hansen's models, which are complex uh, mathematical models about sea level rise, are true, it will not be linear. Uh, it has there's a feedback loop on the on the glaciation melting and causing pools of water under the glaciers. Uh, we're talking about six meter rise by the end of the century. I mean, there are children alive today who will see most of Florida underwater if Jim Hansen's right. right and much of Washington D.C. and much of New York and much of L.A. and much of you know, San Francisco and it just goes on and on and on. Um, it's it's absolutely right. But you can see why people don't want to believe him, right? It doesn't fit with their ideology. Because if you believed him, you would have to do things like big government response. Yeah. And you would have to do things that are far more ambitious than Paris. People don't want to do that in this town, and all the Republicans don't want to do anything at all. Right. Uh, and therefore, they just don't want to believe it. Well, we're... Maybe if they don't believe it, it won't happen. Well, that, yeah, and, and, and you, you said this is kind of wired into the psychology of the human race, that, that, that we don't want to believe these things. And, right. and then there's also the, well, you know, if it's only a small possibility that it'll happen, and it's going to be an enormous hassle to prevent it from happening, right. um, then, then why should we worry about this? The, these are called high-impact, low-probability events. Exactly. And, and the response, the rational response to a high-impact, low-probability event is to hedge your bets. Right. Number one. And number two, keep it under really tight surveillance so that when the evidence starts piling up that it might be right, you increase your hedge against it. Uh, well, the evidence, since I wrote the book a year ago, it just came out last week, but uh, publishing industry is slow, as you know, yeah. uh, the evidence has piled up enormously in the last year that Hansen's right. Yeah. And more and if more. If anything, he's conservative, too. <laughs> more and more experts are moving over to his uh, his prediction. Uh, the IPCC, the UN body, is still back at one meter by 2100. Yeah, well, they're stuck with consensus model as, their, as part of their problem. Well, they also, when I when I talk to people who disagree with Hansen and say, well, what's wrong with his data? They say, well, he hasn't used the scientific method. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? Well, you know, we need replicable studies. I said, what do you want him to do, melt Greenland a few times before you believe it? Right. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's... We call that, in the book, we call that scientific reticence. When the scientists insist on some sort of rigor, that means that you can't know if it's right or not until it's too late. Right. We're talking with Richard A. Clark. He is the author of a brand new book called Warnings, Finding Cassandras to Stop Catastrophes, uh, written with R.P. Eddy. And uh, the, we the website for the book is warningsbook.net. And uh, There's a lot of the book available for free uh, at that website. You can read well, excerpts great. on most of the book. That's great. Um, it, it, <laughs> How, from the, the point, viewpoint of a Cassandra yourself, you know, you, you were in the Bush administration and you were saying, um, there's something going to happen here. And 
I'm guessing that probably a third of our audience anyway was not paying attention or was too young or whatever. I mean, that was quite some time ago, 15, 16 years ago. Um, in the minute or so before we hit a break here, it's, uh, can you kind of recap what happened? Well, so the, uh, the outgoing Clinton administration told the incoming Bush administration, your number one issue to worry about, your number one threat to national security is bin Laden and al-Qaeda. Uh, they didn't believe that. Uh, they had been out of office for eight years. They hadn't been focusing on it. They came in with their own agenda, which was Iraq uh, and China and Russia, uh, big state things. And we said, no, transnational issues are about non-state actors. This is going to happen. And they didn't want to hear about it. And they delayed. I asked for urgent meetings right after the inauguration. They delayed those meetings until September. In, in fact, a week before 9-11. In fact, Dick, Dick Cheney was given two jobs. One was to be the... Uh, energy czar. Energy czar. And, yeah, which he got to right away, yeah. by carving up uh, Iraq in these maps of... And, uh, and then his second job was to be in, in, in charge of, you know, looking out for 9-11, essentially. Not a, there was a, well, he, he was asked. He was asked, and that was the meeting that happened in September. He was asked to worry about homeland security, homeland security, which uh, you know he, he didn't really do. Yeah, it's it's a real it's a real tragedy. So when you went to the the folks in the Bush administration and said, you know, the, the, the Clintons were right; mm. these guys are coming to, after us. What they just look at you blank? Did they? Well, did they yeah, threaten they, you? They, did no, they, they, they kind of looked at me with a look like you're, you're, we thought we knew you, we thought that we liked you, but you're, you're talking like a crazy guy. Uh, and you know, we'll get to you. Get in the queue. We'll get you, to you. You had colleagues you. who were saying the same thing, though. I had the CIA director who was saying the same thing. Uh, and you know, the problem was in part the CIA director uh, George Tennant and I were holdovers from the Clinton administration. And if Clinton said white, they said black. So it just got politicized. It did. That is so tragic. So tragic. Richard Clark is with us. Um, he is the author of a new book, Warnings, Finding Cassandra's to Stop Catastrophe. We'll be back with a little more of our conversation with Richard Clark right now.